This is Calabash Community, and today visiting our studios at Calabash TV is renowned St. Lucian chef, Dennis Rosenberg. For the past 25 years, he has been running his own restaurant in Norwich, England, where he specializes in St. Lucian, Caribbean, African, and Asian cooking. Chef Dennis visited St. Lucia for a much needed break to rest, but also to promote his first book of recipes called Taste of the French Caribbean. Chef Dennis, who is originally from Grosely, speaks about growing up on the edges of a swamp in Grosely, long before the Rodney Bay Marina became a reality. Here he is in studio with CTV's Bernard Fannis. Chef Dennis, welcome to St. Lucia. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And before the interview, we're just discussing your last name, Rosenbeer. Rosenbeer. That's how it's pronounced. And you're from Grosely? From Grosely, yeah. All right, I was just telling you, I don't know too many Rosenbeers from Grosely, but I guess we have one unique Rosenbeer. That's it. We are the only family with that name in, in St. Lucia. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, now, Chef, let's talk a little bit about, you're here on vacation. Yes. What do chefs do on vacation? Do they get to relax or everybody takes advantage of them? Well, people do take advantage <laughs> of us, but um, <laughs> you have to put your foot down and say, we come now there to have, to have a wonderful vacation. And what I do is that um, I usually have one meal for everyone. Mm. So I invite everyone around. Yes. If they cannot make it, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, growing up in Grosely, um, I, when I reading a little bit on your bio, your grandmother was quite involved in oh, who you are today. Very much so. Now, what was her thinking, first of all? I know you said you, you went to the Maigo, the swamp, yeah. to catch fish, crayfish, or whatever it is, tilapia, and so on. <laughs> what was the thinking of you playing in the swamp? Well, the thing is that we, I was living on the swamp, not only <laughs> playing on the swamp. I was mm. living on the swamp. We were about, I would say, 20 feet from the swamp. Mm. So um, you, you get out of the house, straight into the swamp, um, get your fish, go and get your seaweed, your camo, mm -hmm. right? And it, and it was just plentiful, right? And uh, there, right, you know, you have all these things on your doorstep. You have to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. And what she did was that she taught us how to, um, me, how to uh, clean, clean the abab and prepare it and light the fire mm -hmm. because the fire of obviously yes. is the most important part. And at six, she was teaching you to light fire. Yes, at six. <laughs> That's pretty you know? scary. Yeah. Yeah. But um, she, she trusted me because mm -hmm. um, most, in those days, right, um, you didn't have the kitchen mm -hmm. attached to the, to the house. Yes. The kitchen was outside. Mm -hmm. So there was no chance of you burning the house down. Mm -hmm. You see, so that was fine. But I, but I get the impression she was pretty detailed because when we at six were cooking, we did like one pot. Yes. But in your case, you had the fish grilled and you had the salt. I the, mean, the from what I just I saw, there was a lot of detail in it. Yes. Was she a chef herself? A chef herself? Well, I suppose every grandmother is a chef. <laughs> yeah. You know? Mm. So that's the way we learn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so she taught, she taught me how to, what we call wusi. Mm -hmm. Wusi, the birds, right? You yes. know, so, you know, and it's, it's brilliant. And I'm still doing the same now. Mm -hmm. If you check in my book, right, um, I've got the, the Creole chicken, mm -hmm. which is the way that we actually stew chicken with the brown sugar right. and thing. So when I introduced you to my mm -hmm. restaurant in England, right? All the kids that come there, the children, right? Mm -hmm. I give them that to them. And they love it because they've never had anything like that before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, to see a chicken leg is brown instead of being white, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. To them was an exciting thing. And we know how bland the English oh. food can be. <laughs> you must have been quite a revolution for them coming there and then introducing all that, 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 um, that, that innovation. Oh yeah, definitely. Because yeah. Um, where I live, I live in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. Norfolk is a, well, when, when we moved to Norfolk, which was about 27 years ago, mm -hmm. My family was the only black family in the school, wow. right? So I just got to show you mm -hmm. how you know, diverse it is now, now because I, I opened my restaurant 24 years ago, mm -hmm. well, 25 this year, yes. in Norfolk. And um, I introduced all these wonderful dishes that at the time it wasn't, you know, um, it took time for them mm -hmm. to, to be educated. Mm -hmm. But once they were educated, they told the friends and this is why we, we've been successful, mm -hmm. you know? In 1992, when you opened it, the same year we started jazz, actually. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's so when I saw it, I remembered Sinusha Jazz. Um, give us an idea of the landscape. Um, and for you coming in, what difference did you want to bring when you opened your restaurant? The difference, because um, train as a chef, right? Mostly all the chefs, 90% of the world chefs are trained on Escoffier, La Rousse. Mm -hmm. It's like the um, French culinary arts, mm -hmm. right? This is the first basic that, that you have to learn as a chef. But then I had my own St. Lucian ideals as cooking. So what I did was I fused them together. Mm -hmm. I bring them together and obviously that's what Creole is about. Fusion of languages and foods. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized um, what I was doing, people enjoyed it because I actually went up to Norfolk to open a hotel called the Norwich Sports Village. Mm -hmm. It was a hotel and I stayed there for three years. Mm -hmm. And I was testing all my dishes mm -hmm. on the clientele. 
and we were very busy. And um, I said to myself, why are these guys paying me so much money? I was one of the highest paid chefs wow. mm -hmm. in 1992, right? No, 1990, 1989 to 1992, mm -hmm. um, in, in, well, in the UK, but actually working as a chef. Mm -hmm. So, um, and also, at the same time, I was doing kosher catering. I'm a Jewish chef mm -hmm. also. Wow. So I was doing Stanford Hill, Golders Green, all the big weddings and stuff like that. But coming back to what actually made me, is because of what my, the, the feedback from my clientele at a hotel, Norris Post Village. Then I said to myself, um, why don't I do something with my own? Because these guys are paying me a lot of money. Why? Mm -hmm. well, there must be a reason. So when I was living, um, the manager offered <coughs> me a job at Hagadia, the Red Sea. That would, that, would, that would be the first massive hotel in Egypt. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. In the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to be the ex executive chef. But um, the fact that my kids had to go to Cairo to school, mm -hmm. I couldn't handle that. <laughs> yeah. So I said, nah. So I decided to buy um, a restaurant which was, it, historically, it was um, a horse stables. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it was unique. Horse stables still had the, the petitions for the horses, the rings mm -hmm. and everything. And we turned it into the restaurant. It was called Café des Amis. Mm -hmm. Right? And that was your, first, your very first restaurant? My, my very first restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then we stayed there for six years. We we're doing Caribbean evenings about three times a year, wow. and still banned, and about 150 people in the yard and stuff like that. And after six years, um, the lease ran out, so we decided to buy a derelict pub <laughs> built in 1611. Right? So you can imagine mm -hmm. low ceilings, yes. right? The roof hasn't been changed for 400 years. <laughs> so, because I love. I love woodwork, I love building. Oh, okay. So what I did was that um, I had a chef which, I've, which I trained for a few years and he was working in the restaurant during the day and I was working on the building during the day. Wow. And in the evening, I would live there mm -hmm. and I would go and work in the restaurant in the evening. Wow. So my day was full on, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it took me about three or four months to actually complete the restaurant. People could not believe it. I was there from seven o'clock in the morning. Right? But because when I start something, I must finish it. And I love to see the finished product. Mm -hmm. This is what chefs like. The finished product, when you do aspic work and when you do buffet work, once the finished product is done, you take the photograph, mm -hmm. you could destroy it. Yes. And, <laughs> that, and that, no, that, is, that is the idea. There's more ahead from Chef Dennis. Stay tuned. This is Calabash Community.